Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at an important question that occurs in the beginning of your Calculus 1 course, how to determine the limit from a graph of a function. Now we have the standard question over here, like you might encounter in class. I always go through an example like this early on in my Calculus 1 course. But before we go through that, let's go through a few things. First, notice we have a few different types of limits here. X approaches zero. That's a two-sided limit. We're approaching zero from both sides. And the other notation down here, the plus and minus, those are indicating one-sided limits as X approaches two from the right and X approaches two from the left. Now first, let's just get an idea of what a limit is in case that's still not clear for you. So when we write something like this, the limit as X approaches A of F of X equals L, what we're doing is thinking for the function f of x, we're trying to see what happens as x approaches a, where a is some number, from both sides. So as x gets closer to a along the x-axis, what happens to the y or function values? And if as x approaches a from both sides, the y values approach a single number, that number l, we call it the limit, and we say that limit exists. All right, the other thing that you want to keep in mind relating one-sided and two-sided limits, a two-sided limit exists if and only if the individual left and right-hand limits both exist and are equal. Notice we have L, the limit, sandwiched in between there. So if your left and right-hand limits are equal, the two-sided limit exists and equals L. All right, now if the left and right side limits are different, then we say the two-sided limit does not exist. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the question here. There's really no calculations. We just think of the graph. We let X approach a number either from both sides or one side, and we follow along the graph to see what happens to the Y or function values. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. X is approaching zero. And X is approaching zero here from both sides. This is a two-sided limit, sometimes just called a limit. So as we take a look at our graph, as we approach zero from both sides, it looks like our graph here, the Y value is getting close to zero. So move closer to zero from both sides. And you can kind of see you're following along the graph and getting closer to the Y value zero. And since this is a two-sided limit, the left and right-hand limits are equal here. We're going to say this two-sided limit exists and it equals zero. All right, not too bad. Next up, we have a two-sided limit as X approaches negative two. Be careful with the notation. The negative here refers to negative two, but the negative here, which is really not a negative, just notation, this is indicating a one-sided limit. X is approaching two from the left side. So just be careful with that. All right, so we're gonna let X approach negative two from both sides. And we follow along the graph. Let's see what happens as we approach negative two from the left. As we move along the graph, it looks like we're getting really close to where the hole is at Y equals two. Now remember, when you're calculating or evaluating limits, X is only approaching or getting close to A. Here, X is only getting close to negative two. We never actually reach negative two. So when you calculate or evaluate a limit as X approaches A, we only get closer to A, X never equals A. And that's okay that there's a hole there because we're just getting closer to negative two. So it looks like from the left, we're approaching Y value two. And as you approach negative two from the right, following along the other side of the graph, that also approaches Y value two. So here we can say the limit value as X approaches negative two is two. Now it's worth pointing out at negative two, the function value is three. So we might just indicate, just so we understand, if we were to plug negative two into the function g of x here, the closed point indicates where the function value is. So g of negative two 
that's going to be 3. All right, and it's perfectly fine here that the limit value and the function value are different. You're going to make that connection a little bit later in your Calculus 1 course with the idea of continuity. All right, so so far we have parts A and B done. Both those limits exist. All right, next up for part C, we're going to be letting x approach 2, but now only from the right side. So let's find x equals to 2. So we're going to be approaching just from the right side. So as you get closer to 2, it looks like we're following along this part of the graph. And that seems to be getting close to the y value, 4. So here, our limit as x approaches 2 from the right, that does exist. The function or graph approaches a single value, and that single value from the right, it approaches the y value 4. So that's our limit. All right, next up, we're going to approach 2, but now from the left side. And as you approach 2 from the left, now we follow along the other side of the graph. And you can see your y value is getting close to now 3. So here, as we let x approach 2 from the left, this limit exists. Again, the graph or y values approach a single number, which is 3. So that's our limit here. Now, if we take a look at the final part, part E, this is a two-sided limit. And notice the previous two parts, you have your right and left side limits both exist, but they're different. We can immediately conclude here this two-sided limit, you might write D and E for this limit does not exist, and that's because, and you should always justify this, at least in your Calc 1 course in the beginning, like asked here, explain why. The because here is part C and D, the right and left side limits, both exist but are different. So you just might write that the limit here as x approaches 2 from the right does not equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And there we go. Four of these different parts, the limits exist. The last part here, part E, the limit does not exist. Again, this is a standard question in a Calculus 1 course. Its goal is to build your intuition and understanding of limits basically for the rest of the calculus sequence. So make sure you understand a problem like this. You will almost definitely see it on a quiz or one of your tests or exams. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're learning a lot, support the channel, like and subscribe.